That was a collaboration between um, our nonprofit academic international group, which is called TRIO, our, our Translational Research in Oncology, and GSK. And what it looked at was adding lapatinib, which is a small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitor of EGFR and HER2 that's already approved in breast cancer and looking at it in combination with chemotherapy. The methods were a fairly standard ran large randomized phase three trial. And the most important thing is, is that we had a very homogeneous group of patients and that they all had to have HER2 that was, um, HER2 that was fish amplified by a central laboratory rather than, because there's a lot of heterogeneity between labs around the world. So I think we have a really truly biologically driven group. It's an international trial in 22 countries around the world, Asia, Europe, and to a lesser extent, North America. Um, a total of four, 545 patients were randomized. Um, of those, not all of them had centrally you know, documented HER2 positivity. Um, this was an event-driven analysis after about 300, what I reported were 350 events. And what it showed was that overall, there was no statistically significant improvement in overall survival by adding lapatinib to a standard capecitabine and oxaliplatin-based regimen. Um, the things that were particularly interesting were there, was, there did seem to be improvement in response rate. There did seem to be an improvement in progression-free survival. There seemed to be an improvement in duration of response, but there was no significant improvement in overall survival. There were certain pre-planned subgroups where we looked at like where patients came from. About 40% of patients came from Asia. And in that group, the hazard ratio um, was 0.68. So a major improvement, um, basically a 32% improvement in overall survival in that very large subgroup. Once you got out of, outside of Asia, no significant improvement. Actually made, you know, definitely with a hazard ratio of greater than one. If you looked at patients who were under 60, which was a little less than half the patients, um, very similar, hazard ratio 0.69, so a 31% improvement in overall survival. Patients 60 years of age or older, no difference. And we have a lot of biomarker analysis that's underway. We have um, a separate translational team. We have a separate translational um, committee that's looking at these, and, and I think they'll help try to understand why these surprising differences. Well, there are a lot of theories that I think we were able to disprove. One thought was is that um, it appears that Asians are better able to tolerate fluoroprimidine. So one of the questions would be that, um, you know, maybe it had something to do with the, you know, the uh, Asians were able to be better tolerate the chemotherapy, and that had something to do with it. But actually, there were no differences when we looked. So there, we know there are biological differences between tumors in Asia and in the rest of the world. That's been known for a long time. People after surgery, patients after surgery who are operated on, um, particularly in Korea, for example, and to a lesser extent in China, do better than in Western countries. So there are biological differences. They tend to be younger. So there may be an overlap with this age, with the you know, difference less than 60 versus greater than 60. But I think there's a huge amount of, of biomarker work and biology work that really remains to be done.